credere nel proprio territorio è quello che poi il cliente percepisce no? nell'elaborato del piatto, no? quindi le proprie radici, i propri piatti e le origini non vanno mai tralasciate. Ciao a tutti, Marco qui e oggi I'm coming from the heart of Salento e I want to answer the question: can you take something as traditional as Italian cuisine and make it modern? And can you do the same with a home? So that's what we're pairing today. I'm going to be meeting up with, I think, one of the most innovative chefs of this area, Andrea Serravezza, and he's going to be giving me his take on modern, traditional Apulian cuisine. And then we're going to be going to visit the Noble Palace, which is basically a time capsule built in the end of the 19th century. Andiamo! The Adriatic Sea separates Puglia and the Balkans by only about 70 kilometers at Otranto, Italy's most eastern city. That's where our journey starts today, and you'll see why. So the year's 1480, 28th of July, the Ottoman fleet arrives to Otranto, having been pushed south when they were heading with their forces to sack Brindisi. And for 15 days, they laid siege to the city, which unfortunately fell. But leaving wars and pillaging aside, today we're going to eat amazing Italian food and visit a dream home for sale. And I'm driving down the road from Otranto to a town called Palmarigi. Palmarigi is one of those small southern Italian towns which seems forgotten in time. And I mean that in a totally positive way. The town of 1,400 inhabitants has a main square that's full of Baroque architecture and that typical Apulian charm. And that's most evident in the Chiesa Matrice, the Church of San Luca, and the town's clock tower dating back to the 1800s. So we're at the sanctuary of La Madonna del Monte Carmine. I'm here to tell you the story of Palmarici and how it got its name. After the Ottoman Turks overtook Otranto, they were on their way inwards to take over the rest of Salento, but they were stopped by a band of what were the villagers led by La Madonna who was holding a big palm. And so the Turks, in fear that this was the Aragonese army, retreated back and were soon repelled then from Otranto and left Italy. And so from then on, the village was always called Palmarigi, that is, you who holds the palm. And down the road from Palmarigi is Andrea's Mediterranean Food Experience, one of the best rated restaurants in this part of Salento. I had to go see it. Ciao Marco, buongiorno. <laughs> buongiorno. Come stai? Tutto bene? Grazie, grazie. Ben trovato, ben arrivato. Che Questo cosa? è il nostro piccolo ristorantino, è un'avventura partita circa quattro anni fa. Il pavimento, come puoi vedere, sono le vecchie cementine di una volta. E proprio da lì è che è partito il progetto della, della ristrutturazione, mantenendo gli arredi, partendo dal, dall'idea della cementina, riportandola su tutto ciò che è l'arredo poi della del ristorantino. Eh. È un po' tutto ripercorre ciò che era la vecchia casa dei nostri genitori, dei nostri nonni. And so I sat down with Andrea to ask, what is your philosophy in the kitchen? And how do you tie that in with the traditions of this region in Italy? Credere nel proprio territorio è quello che poi il cliente percepisce nell'elaborato del piatto, no? quindi le proprie radici, i propri piatti e le origini non vanno mai tralasciate, vanno sempre fatte rinascere. E siccome a me piace tutto ciò che è stagionalità, tutto ciò che è territorio, eh, quando ad esempio ieri siamo andati al mercato dal contadino vicino casa a comprare gli ortaggi per realizzare i piatti di oggi eh, già è in quel momento che parte l'idea del piatto, no? Proprio lì che dai vita, dai vita alla storia se tutto poi si riesce a portare nel piatto con, con il dovuto rispetto dell'ingrediente 
che per quello che si fa il piatto avrà un suo perché e sarà sempre più buono e sostanzialmente questo è la mia filosofia di cucina ecco qui prego Marco questo è il piatto del giorno sono le orecchiette di grano arso e con una crema di rape e un fondo di salsa di zucca gialla emulsionata con gli sponsali lo sponsale è il cipollotto selvatico eh, salentino e con la parte verde invece ho fatto quel nido croccante che sta per dare quella nota di croccantezza insieme alla vela di pane croccante e le acciutine eh, di salate buon pranzo sembra meraviglioso grazie, grazie buon pranzo so guys i wish you can taste this because the combination of flavors is so explosive we have this kind of sweet cream from the puree mixed with the, the pungent sharpness of the anchovies and it's all carried so well on these orecchiette. Mm. Wow, out of this world good. So as I was finishing off my first dish, Andrea was obviously in the kitchen working on his next masterpiece. Mm, che cosa abbiamo qui? Dunque proseguiamo con tentacoli di polpo cotti a bassa temperatura leggermente scottati con un po' di timo fresco accompagnati con degli ortaggi di stagione quindi eh, fondelli di carciofo e finocchietti baby eh, con delle vele di pane croccante e un goccio di olio extra vegetale mm. wow oh oh my god guys this is my conclusion this is what Mediterranean cuisine is all about. It's the mix of the local ingredients like you'll find in this plate, whether that's from the countryside, vegetables, local produce, or if it's fresh, freshly caught from the sea. And it just all comes together into something which tastes of the territory. It t this tastes like Salento to me. Ciao Marco. Ciao, grazie. Ciao in bocca al lupo. Ciao, 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 ciao. This is what you have to aim for when you come to Salento, a place where everything is typical, it's local. So yeah, that's it. We're off now to see the Palazzo in Palmarigi. Let's go! Okay, so heading from the city center, right around the corner, we arrive to the house that we're going to see today. Now I'm really excited about this house because I think it's very typical of a noble class palazzo from the, basically a century ago. And it really demonstrates the, the riches that this uh, area of Italy produced just a very little while ago. So really excited, I hope you like this. This for me is pure Dolce Vita architecture. So this is the house that we're seeing today, a historical palazzo in the center of Palmarigi. This is, I think, the definition of a house with history. This was built at the end of the 18th century and you can see this gorgeous facade in Pietra Leccese with the sculptures built in to the, the arches of the doors, above the framing of the windows and this is the type of house that gets me really excited. So let's go inside and have a look. Okay, so when you enter into the building, you're presented with this beautiful entryway. So it's very typical of the noble palaces that you'll find in Salento to have an entryway like this. So on the ground floor, we have to the right one apartment, um, which consists of three different uh, spaces, and then another one uh, on the other side, equally uh, composed with three different spaces. So I'm going to show you each one of those. Let's start off with this side. 
So when you enter in, you can immediately see that this building needs to be renovated. Um, it's basically a time capsule, and so nothing has really been touched in it over the past 70 years. But that's also a good thing because you have the original tiles here in the front, the cementine, typical from Salento. And the other thing you'll note is the extremely high vaulted ceilings, and that's going to be the theme throughout this house. And this is your the entryway, you know, this would be the living room of the first apartment. You have the door looking out onto the street in the little courtyard in front of the house. And we have two more rooms going into the back. So then coming in, you have this center room. This can be set up as a sort of bedroom or a second living space. You have the window looking out onto the street this way. Vaulted ceiling is really beautiful. And then we have the third room right in the back here. So this is the third, the back room of this apartment. You have the light coming in from this side, so it still has a lot of natural light coming into it. You have the bathroom up in the front, so this does come with a bathroom. It is missing a, a kitchen area, so perhaps this would be where you would build the kitchen. You have a really nice fireplace. So I see this as being you know, two independent apartments on either side where you have kind of like a suite situation with a living area, a bedroom, and then kind of like the bathroom, kitchen area over here. So next we have the apartment on the, what would be your right side. Now it's my left, but you're right when you're coming in through the door. So we're going to come in here to the right. We're right under the stairs, which will be going up onto the first floor. So this is what would be the kind of dining area, living space of this second apartment. Uh, you have the, the fireplace over there, once again, very high ceilings. But you actually have a kitchen going into the back this way. And to the right, is you have the two uh, bigger spaces, which would be kind of the living room and the bedroom. Let me show you the kitchen. So this is the kitchen that has to be renovated. But the good thing is, is that it has a lot of potential. It already has the typical kitchen, which already existed in Salento about a hundred years ago, in which you would place fire under the stove and you, you would heat up whatever you're, you know, you're cooking here. This is something that you leave in. You, you renovate, you leave it in, because this is just really spectacular, traditional uh, Salento living. So the thing that I really love about these kitchens is that I can imagine over thousands and thousands of delicious dinners having been cooked here over the past century. So it's, it's a kitchen with history. So coming out from the kitchen, we're back in the dining area. To the left here, it brings you out into the gorgeous, gorgeous garden. We're gonna go and see that, but first I'm gonna show you the other two rooms. Okay, so this is the center room of this apartment. Beautiful original cementine tiles here as well, which I love to see. High ceilings once again. Unfortunately, we couldn't get the shades open, so it is a bit darker in here. So this would be you have the dining room, the living area, and then in front now, I'm going to show you the master bedroom. Okay, so this is what would be the master bedroom. Right in front here, you actually have the big balcony into the little courtyard garden in front of the house. Another uh, design here on the Cementine tiles, which are gorgeous. They recount history of this place. And behind this armoire, we actually have the bathroom. Okay, now we're gonna go up this gorgeous stairway and I'm gonna show you the first floor. Come on, this is beautiful. Okay, Stop, top of the stairs. 
this is the right side of the building, uh, and it's currently uh, closed off. But we're going to look at the central part of this top floor, and then the left part, which has the door right behind here. So let's go in looking at the center atrium. Okay, so this is where the piano nobile starts. You enter into this, I call it an atrium, but it's really the, the entry area. And you can already see the cementine tiles. We have the left side of the apartment over there. And this is the central part looking out onto the, uh, the street in front of us, the main facade. So this would be the main living room on the upstairs. This is the balcony in the middle of the facade. This area really has all of the main characteristics of a noble palazzo in the, in the Salento style. So you have the painted walls, you have the frescoed vaulted ceilings, and you have a really luminous uh, doorway bringing in light from the outside. Structurally, this is as typical as they get from noble palaces from the end of the 1800s. Okay, so this is the main master bedroom. Here's the balcony out in front overlooking the street. So I think another spectacular thing about this room is actually the, the furniture, which is antique and they just don't make it like this anymore. And then from there, we have this second bedroom. This is a bit smaller, and the window that we have is looking out onto the garden. There's also this little bathroom nook which was built in, and I'm gonna show you that now. Okay, coming out from there, we now head into the kitchen. So rather, this is the dining room. And going straight forward, we'll go into the kitchen. Uh, going to the right, we actually have the stairs going up to the roof. But this, I think, would be, this is perfectly set up as a dining room. You don't have any windows looking on from uh, any streets, but you do have openings for doors on every single one of the, the four sides. Now onto the kitchen. So this is what would be the upstairs kitchen area. You have plenty of room to work with. You even have a window up at the, the top of this back wall, which is, I think, just a, a testimony to how big and how high the ceilings are. And I'm gonna show you one of the tops of the roof, which is right down here. This is the lower level. So we're on the rooftop and, and I'm in love with it because we have the countryside with the olive groves. We have the other palaces and rooftops of the neighbors around, not to mention the church and the main square right around the corner. This can be an amazing spot once it's renovated. So this is my favorite part of the house. It's this garden of over 1,000 meters squared. It's a bit of Mediterranean paradise with orange trees, lemon trees, pomegranate trees. You know, you, you put this place together and you have a really magical garden. <laughs> 